Imagine this, power lines are down, cell towers are out, and the internet is gone. How do we communicate in the wake of a major disaster? In such critical moments, maintaining communication is not just helpful, it's essential. Yet it's during these times that our most relied upon communication infrastructures are most likely to fail. The very fabric of our modern connectivity can unravel in seconds, leaving communities cut off from vital emergency services and each other. This is where amateur radio steps in, a lifeline in times of isolation. Now, what exactly is amateur radio, often called ham radio? Imagine a worldwide network where people from all walks of life connect, not through the internet, but using radio frequencies. This is the essence of amateur radio. It's a fascinating hobby that combines socializing technology and sometimes emergency communications. At its core, amateur radio involves transmitting and receiving messages over radio frequencies. Operators, or hams as they are affectionately known, use various types of equipment to communicate. The primary tool is the transceiver, a device that can both transmit and receive radio signals. Alongside this, antennas play a crucial role in sending and capturing signals. These can range from small portable setups to large complex structures towering over buildings. Communication isn't just limited to the local neighborhood or city. With the right setup, hams can talk to fellow enthusiasts across countries or even bounce signals off the moon to reach other continents. Yes, amateur radio can indeed reach cosmic proportions. Becoming a part of this community involves obtaining a license. This requires some study, as one needs to understand radio operations and regulations. The licensing ensures that all operators have the necessary knowledge to use the frequencies responsibly. Globally, there are millions of licensed amateur radio operators. Each one is part of a unique, diverse community that thrives on exploration, communication, and technical mastery. With just a bit of gear and a license, anyone can become a crucial part of this global network. So how does amateur radio prove so invaluable during emergencies? Imagine a hurricane has just made landfall. Power lines are down and cell towers are out. In this chaos, amateur radio operators become the lifeline. They set up their radios and begin transmitting vital information. One operator in the affected area might report on road closures or the status of shelters, while another coordinates with emergency services to dispatch aid where it's most needed. Take the case during Hurricane Katrina, where amateur radio operators established communications long before other systems were restored. They relayed messages from disaster-stricken areas to the outside world, coordinating rescue efforts and providing real-time updates. Organizations like the Amateur Radio Emergency Service and the Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service play a crucial role here. These networks consist of trained volunteers ready to step in when traditional communication systems fail. They ensure a flow of information and aid coordination, proving essential in times of crisis. It's not just about having the tools, it's about knowing how to use them when it counts the most. Interested in being more than just prepared? Want to be on the front lines of emergency communication? Embarking on the journey to become an amateur radio operator is both exciting and vital, especially in times of disaster. The first step towards this goal is obtaining your amateur radio license. Start by studying for the Federal Communications Commission FCC exam which covers basic regulations, operating practices, and electronics theory. Various resources are available online and through local clubs to help you prepare. Once you've passed the exam, it's time to gather your equipment. A reliable transceiver is essential, capable of both receiving and transmitting signals. You'll also need a good antenna, preferably one that's versatile enough to handle different bands and frequencies. Don't forget to connect with the community. Joining local amateur radio clubs and emergency networks not only boosts your skills through shared knowledge, but also integrates you into a prepared network of operators, ready to serve when disaster hits. Step up, get licensed, and you could be the one making a difference when disaster strikes. In the silence that follows a disaster, the airwaves come alive with the voices of amateur radio operators. When the usual channels falter, these dedicated individuals step into the breach, their radios crackling with life amidst the quiet aftermath of calamity. Amateur radio is not merely a hobby, it's a lifeline in times of dire need. 
These operators form a unique community bonded not by proximity but by the frequency they share. They are the steadfast guardians of the airwaves ensuring that no call for help goes unanswered, no matter how isolated the caller is. This network of amateur radio enthusiasts proves time and again its indispensable value. Free from the dependencies of modern communication infrastructures, which can falter under nature's might, these radios work when nothing else will. They require no internet connection, no cellular towers, just the air around us and the skill of the operator. In times of crisis, when every second counts, amateur radio operators are often the unsung heroes keeping us connected and safe.